customer and make it overall uh, cheaper to, for people to pay for on-street parking. Um, so it's those sort of things we're wanting to promote and test and trial now. Um, the options that were sent out in the pack, as Vanessa said, we won't go through them all individually, we'll take it as, as read. Um, there was the original response to the motion on, notion, motion on notice um, and then some other options as well. The final point, just to mention, um, so for some options, um, particularly the app only payment zone requires some legislative changes, which we're expecting to happen later this year. So we can get your feedback on that tonight, which we'd love. Um, but if we're wanting to implement something like that, they'll just um, need to wait for that. Um, things that are within our control to change right now will be um, a lot of the, the other options there in terms of keeping all the payment options as they are, ticket machines and whatnot, but then looking at ways to discount payments by the apps. To do now, and there's a range of ways we could do that, which is part of what we're seeking your feedback on. Um, so, with that in mind, that's probably all I think we wanted to share before we hand back to the chair to, to run through the, the questions and workshop. Great, thank you. Welcome up to the floor, members. Councillor Mackey. Uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, just a little bit of additional information that um, I would find helpful. Uh, page eight of the uh, pie chart, which identifies New Park off street car parking at 6,100, and then our various on street options. Um, just for my benefit, do you, do you have an estimation of the number of non New Park off street car parking station spaces? Um, because that is also a factor in, that, in, it, in being aware of what the weight and carrying capacity and demand uh, is. Just so I've got that question correct, the amount of on street, yeah, off, off street, street, off street. So you know the Wilsons. Yeah, and, I don't have it to hand now. I can come back. Thank to you. you. Thanks, Chair. Councillor Sims. Thank you, uh, Chair, and thank you very much for the um, report and um, detailing some of the options. Um, to be honest, I've got a pretty open mind on um, any of uh, these um, things. You, you mentioned um, the idea of increasing the amount of paid on street parking bays in the city, which in effect would be to replace some of the free uh, parking. That's something I think we should look at. Um, but I guess the question for me is then what do we do with the revenue that is generated? And I think we should look at investing that into cycling infrastructure or directing that towards sustaining the free city connect to bus so that it has a clear um, transport focus and achieving an environmental outcome. Um, I know there's been some media commentary around this that talks about lack of car parking in the city and so on. I don't think that's factually true. Um, and uh, indeed, we've had numerous reports um, from the administration that have made it very clear that we don't have a shortage of um, car parking in the city. And certainly it's my understanding that if you compare um, car parking uh, in Adelaide, CBD with other capital cities around the, the country, we find we do have um, ample par parking um, spaces available. Is that your understanding? Comparatively, uh, yes. Um, yeah, it's a, yeah, and the more what we know is the more, more, you, more you provide, the more it'll get used as well. But comparatively, yeah, what you're suggesting, absolutely. Yeah, I just think we, we could look at this as a bit of an opportunity to say, let's generate some more revenue and um, direct it into alternative transport options <coughs> like having a world-class uh, bike network in the city of Adelaide, like having a free um, bus uh, connect to service. I think it would be an exciting opportunity to get some funds to invest into those projects as alternatives to just the motor vehicle. Members, any other contributions in this council Martin? Um, yeah, look, um, I have a couple of questions about the, uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor's proposal. Um, the first one is at page 10 refers to a, a, a zone three that was created specifically to introduce uh, to areas which were free, which have become paid parking. When was that introduced? Uh, one assumes it went to council for approval. Um, through the chair, the zone three fees have been in existence for years. Um, they predate me. Um, okay. So the fees were introduced in um, 
yeah, years ago. I've been here seven years, so they predate me. Um, and I understand they were put in place in the event that council decided they wanted to expand pay parking, which they never have. Okay. Um, and uh, can I get an idea of how much we've spent on uh, smart parking strategies? You know, that is the, the app, the software, the sensors, um, all of that, um, because it was a huge package that came in over a period of time. It's $3 million. $3 million. And what's our return in the last 16 months? Is it 180000 on that $3 million? I think that's in the slide pack, that's right. So what Steve just ex explained through the chair is that um, the, we've had 29,000 customers download the app, but most of them use it for navigation. And what we're trying to do now is encourage the use of it for paying for parking as well. So, okay. Um, and I, I'm just trying to get a handle on what's being proposed. It, it's proposed, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, that we're going to introduce paid parking to 460 something spaces, which are currently free. Sorry, through the chair, nothing's being proposed tonight. So we've given options to members for consideration and we're seeking your feedback on all of those options. Is that one of the options? One of the options was to expand paid parking to where there is currently no parking. That's correct. Okay. But then they're just proposals and options for discussion and feedback. We'll bring a report back to Council with recommendations for decision. And, and look, there are maps there, uh, uh, which I, I, I confess I have trouble with, but it looks to me like most of those uh, spots that are proposed as an option for paid parking, which were once free parking, are mostly in Central and South Ward, is that correct? That's correct. And are there any in North Ward? No. Uh, this proposal's looking better. Um, and um, is, it, is it also true? Uh, is it also um, why, why wouldn't I say that? I live in North Adelaide. Exactly what should be saying. Now, um, if I could ask, uh, because it is, it is important, um, is it one of the options that being, that's being proposed that we or the administration has a preference to put sensors in as well, or is it a preference to have just the app um, with a bag over the machine or, or not? We don't have a particular preference. We were, we were presenting all the information and options for council to decide. So sensors provide additional information. They're also more expensive. Okay. So the, the options that are being presented is that we go for paid parking and it could be with the app or um, uh, with the app with the sensors as, a, as an option. Uh, through the chair, we already have paid parking. So the options tonight are for whether you want um, app only paid parking zones, so new zones where people only pay by the app, whether you would like zones where people have both, which they have now, but they have differential pricing for paying with the app. And the other option is for expanding paid parking in the city. So simply put, they're the three options and there's various options for how the pricing differential could work. So okay. we're actually seeking your feedback on all of those things. Okay, well, no, that's fine because I am confused. I really am confused generally. So what's being proposed is the possibility of converting um, uh, currently free parking, 400 odd spaces to pay parking. Additionally, a proposal for use of the app as a trial in particular areas without the machine or potentially an area that has an app with sensors where there is currently paid parking or not currently paid parking. Uh, through the chair, that's mostly correct, except that where there are now sensors, it is all paid parking already. So if, yep. if if council wished, we could install new sensors in new bays. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's four or five options. Yeah. Well, well, there's there's it. probably there's probably um, a number of combinations of those options. So really, what we're seeking your feedback on is um, a response to the initial motion, which was an app only zone. So we faithfully tried to present that as an option, and we then presented a whole variety of different options. Um, 
And I guess the fundamental question is, are elected members keen to see an expansion of paid parking? And within the existing paid parking, how would you like us to use the smart parking technology more effectively? And how would you like us to use um, the opportunity we have and that it presents to differentiate pricing for the benefit of the city users? Okay, um, I have some comments. Would you prefer I keep those until everybody's finished? No, no, please go ahead. Go. Okay. Um, look, uh, I am uh, aware of the considerable um, public criticism of consideration of these options. Um, there was a, uh, a very critical piece in the advertiser this morning. Um, there have been a lot of public comments, both to me privately and published. Um, with people saying things like, um, uh, with, with the possibility of more paid parking, reason 264 not to bother visiting the city, no more shopping in the city, uh, another brilliant idea not, and it goes on and on. Um, and, and the common thread in all of it is that um, we are, uh, to quote the piece of the advertiser, um, uh, possibly working towards creating a ghost town. Um, because we are making it harder and harder for people to come and visit us. Um, uh, and uh, while I'm sure that the, uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor's intentions in proposing this were uh, honourable, it, it does risk, I think, I, I think it does risk alienating people terribly. Um, particularly as it comes hard on the heels of the Deputy Lord Mayor's proposal to revoke courtesy letters um, which, uh, as we know, cost uh, council millions of dollars, but millions of dollars in goodwill. And it comes hard on the heels of decisions to increase parking rates. Now, I know that everyone will say, oh yeah, but we've, we've got this new early bird rate of $8. The truth of the matter is our rates are going up for short term visits. So if you're paying two, three hours, you're paying more than you ever were to park in the city of Adelaide. So it's getting harder and harder. Um, and my feeling is that at, at this time when people are um, hurting, businesses are going broke. Um, and I saw on television last night, as I'm sure most of you did, estimates, credible estimates, that something in the order of 10% of all businesses will not survive. Um, and we are proposing to our businesses and to our ratepayers generally that we will impose uh, perhaps another disincentive to visit the city. And on top of that, I am concerned about uh, an app-only trial that will effectively discriminate against people who have difficulty with um, uh, apps and also um, uh, disabilities, um, because we are driving them to change their behaviours, which may not suit them. I know that a lot of the areas under consideration and look, I may have misread the, the maps, but they involve a lot of hospitals and medical suites and things like that all around the areas. Um, that seems to me to be a, a particular concern. But going back to what I was saying, um, and another of the comments that I read online was that, uh, look, I'm old. Uh, I've got a phone, but it doesn't uh, have apps. It's not a smartphone. What's going to happen to me? Uh, and I know of people who just don't have phones. Um, so, um, my, my feeling is this is the wrong time. Moreover, and one more point if I may chair, um, um, it, it does seem to me that this raises a bigger question for all of us, that is that millions have been spent on this smart park, parking strategy. It's proposed we invest even more heavily into it and yet the return has been in 16 months $180,000. Um, that would suggest to me that rather than pushing on, the council ought to be asking, what the hell are we doing with smart parking technology? Is it really what people want? Um, is it money well spent on behalf of ratepayers? And I'm sorry, Chair, I, I know you'll be disappointed to be here speaking against your proposal, but that's no, why you... No, no, you're speaking for it. Lord Mayor. Um, thank you. 
Uh, look, I think it's really important, um, members, that we do actually note this is a workshop. And the point of the workshop is so that we can actually um, look at the views on the options that are before us. And I, I do actually take Councillor Martin's point that there was some um, not too complimentary uh, um, coverage in the uh, media today. But uh, that actually addressed two pages of the entire workshop um, document, which is 27 pages long. And uh, on radio yesterday, I did encourage those members of the public that were interested to actually go and download the papers and have a read of them because there's some great information in there. Um, uh, just in terms of your question, Councillor Sims, my recollection was that from the Smart Move strategy, we had over 42,000 parts, there may have been more than that, um, in terms of uh, off-street and on-street parking. So, um, and so the off-street was around 23, 24,000 parts, and wow. the on-street was about 18,000 parts. So, and oh, sorry, Greg, that was your question. And so, um, of which we have, uh, you know, a number. And and in in context of this, obviously, um, the, what was highlighted through the media is the 400 spaces that is over the 15 minute um, that we're looking to, uh, to to looking at the option of whether we put in some parks. That is in the context of there being 10,000 free car park spaces in the city. So. Um, the other thing that I do actually want to just remind everybody is that we have frozen the rates for on-street and off-street parking um, for this budget, so we're not making any increases from the 1920 budget going into the 2021 budget. So um, I think um, this is the smart parking technology is a really interesting thing, and I do take your point that we've invested a lot of money, and um, I'd love to have uh, seen a, a greater uptake. Now, it might be the way that we are communicating that. Um, I think that's probably part of the measure. And it's also um, in the way that we communicated the UPARC uh, Plus at that moment in time they had a huge take up. So we had more than 10,000 people sign up to that, but that was a very focused, very clear uh, sort of message. So I'm sort of interested in how we connect our parking technology across the city. Um, again, it is contactless, it is quite convenient, and I do actually, again, take the point of not everybody's on a smartphone, but I, I'd be really keen to understand how many people 10 years ago had a smartphone to how many people now have a smartphone or use apps. And we know that that is the direction that technology is going. Um, I do actually support uh, trialling and testing. We are a city that has a reputation for innovation and we need to constantly be able to test and trial new ideas. You know, if we're going to think of ourselves as Testbed 5000, where anybody that is looking at business initiatives or new innovations, entrepreneurial tech, can actually think that they can test and trial, we need to be doing that ourselves. And this is part of our own innovation agenda. So I do actually support the trialling of app only, obviously if it's communicated really well, um, so that we can actually see what the take up is of um, those paid parking zones. I also do uh, support the differential pricing if there's a reduction as a, an incentive. Um, I think incentives do work, prefer the carrot to the stick. So let's go uh, with a differential pricing if somebody's using the app to a ticket machine. Most people are using the ticket machines where they're available using credit cards anyway. So this, this is actually one thing less they have to do. If it's an app, they can do it from their phone. Um, I'm, I am a little bit surprised there wasn't great a take up because I think the idea of being able to extend your parking if you're running late by virtue of your phone is a, a huge initiative that we've taken up and I think we need to perhaps make a bit more of that. Um, discounted pricing via the app, happy with that. The user base, I would want to take that one with a, uh, uh, with, an, uh, uh, with some care. I do actually think we should use it to discount prices. I'm not so keen on us using it to increase prices. I think that if we can actually have a look at the demand across the city and use it so that we can encourage uh, use of those parking spaces rather than discourage any use, we know that we actually want to make it all work. Um, the other thing is I'm just keen to understand in terms of those 400 spaces out of the 10,000 free spaces that we currently have, um, that is 
my understanding is that that is to, and, and the, the locations of that which are in the CBD and, and into the South Ward are really for the encouragement of turnover of parking spaces around businesses. Is that correct? That was that was the sort of the intention behind that? That's right, particularly. So there's two options around expanding paid parking. So option one, I think it was, which yeah. was more in the CBD, which was around that. Um, sort of continuation on how we um, how zone one and zone two have worked. It represents the most high demand um, areas um, for turnovers for businesses. That is correct. Uh, there was a second option as well, which looked up for different areas, but the area is being. And so just in terms of if we were to look at those parks, so the 400 odd parks, um, it, would we have um, some sort of engagement or, or discussion with the businesses in those areas, just in terms of what would work with those businesses for turning over those parks? Because um, I, I also understand we're not going to touch disability parking, we're not going to touch loading zones. This is simply the ones that looking at a turnover for those businesses um, to actually uh, trade better. And the final thing for me is um, I do actually like the idea of attaching any additional revenue to something that gives us a better outcome. Um, so Councillor Sims, um, what they did in Darwin over the COVID period um, is they attached any additional revenue through parking to a um, uh, it was called something Darwin, what was it called? Um, it was a, an initiative where it was a voucher system that went into local businesses. And um, and that was basically, they looked at any revenue over a period and that revenue went in, it was about 300,000, which then were um, discount vouchers which went into the local businesses and the take up's been really good. In fact, the take up's been so good that the state government has now given them a million dollars to continue to do that. So that's, in, that's um, um, looking at a $7 million impact on the small businesses. Um, I have actually given that to Claire just in the last- three minutes yet. Sorry, Chair, if you could get off your phone. That's fine. Uh, sorry, Councillor. Sorry. Just making a valid contribution. Just um, the mark have we got a three minute limit? Is there a three minute limit on this? The timer, the timer doesn't appear to be long. And I'll just put it down for one more minute. If well, you can, you think... if you, the sooner you let her finish, Councillor Moran, the sooner we can get to you because we've got to get through Councillor Noel, Councillor Kira, Councillor Cross. Then back to Councillor Sims and then back to yourself. Oh, so you didn't see my hand when it went up before everybody else's? No, no, that was the order. Well, it's also pretty difficult when you're reading it, texting on your phone all the time. Uh, I'm, dealing the same with, I'm dealing with broadcast issues at the moment. Oh, are you just? Yes, yes. 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 we can all that. So if you can, you can please be quiet and we'll pass back to the Lord Mayor. Thank you, presiding time. member. I think I'm finished. I just actually saying I, I do actually support us investigating, um, reinvesting that money back into the city and the city businesses. Um, and thank you. I thought it was a really comprehensive um, workshop paper. Um, it is a workshop, and there's a lot more for us to um, discuss here. Thank you for that, Lord Mayor. Councillor Noll, um, just as a a question number one, in regards to when you're doing your crossings and that, the difference between the, the uh, parking meters and uh, the app, uh, is there a, a maintenance expense in that as well, or is it just, so that's the total expense, including maintenance that you have for the for the parking meters? So these, uh, what's quoted here is sort of direct costs for maintenance and license fees. Um, internally, there is a bit more work. Sorry, Councillor Moran. Every committee meeting, every committee meeting, your phone goes off. No, I would ask it to happen consistently. Every committee meeting and most councils, it is incredibly, it is incredibly disrespectful to everyone here, including the staff who have assembled. Who have assembled. I would ask you to please ensure that your phone is on silent and that the volume is turned down. If you are going to watch Facebook videos or whatever it is while you're here in committee, I would ask that you make sure it's muted. Oh my God, you have been on your phone. Councillor Moran, Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran, let's let's stop trying to change the subject. Please ensure your phone is on silent. Okay, For this and subsequent committee meetings, I will pass back to Councillor Noel. Thank You're you. chairing the meeting and you've been on your Councillor Noll so has the call. Uh, to insist that he stops at three minutes. So Councillor Noll, I did not insist. In fact, I gave him yes, for a minute. Oh, you I'm not going to get into this to and fro, oh, Councillor Moran. Councillor Noll, you have the call. Thank you. Um, now, I suppose let's go across. Number one, uh, I was 
say, uh, I consider the app to be, a, a, you know, a certainly a step forward. I don't necessarily consider it that to be app only, because unless we're encouraging people to uh, switch to that, then you know, you're not going to get, uh, you know, it's just like COVID has said, that encouraged people to use the credit card instead of cash. Uh, we have to find ways to encourage them to go and use the app. And and no, while you're doing that, you're also going to help get. Um, uh, Encourage them to do what you know. The, 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 go to spaces you wish. Give discounts where you can. You're enabling them to do a lot of things, and it's better again that you assist them in uh, uh, using it instead of the other. And I also think, I mean, if you're using it to pay for the parking where you are, I'm thinking. Uh, then, so, with, the, with you're in your vehicle, you're here to park. You've parked. You've got your app. You're sitting in the GPS should be able to detect where you are, not necessarily the, the sensor underneath. So you're painting your park, you have your park, you know, the, the, the number plate, etc. So theoretically, you can just pay for it in this spot, correct? Is that because I'm doing But of course. Um, so, but if we're doing that, then that obviously that makes it a lot easier as well. And if you're giving them discounts to do that, you're encouraging them to do that, which I think is, is, is important because you know that will in, uh, drive the, uh, the value of it. Um, now, uh, why would paid parking for a particular time uh, encourage anybody any differently than free parking at a particular time? Um, you know, so uh, the turnover for the for these businesses, and again, we're all we're now in a difficult time. Um, adjusting your, your you know uh, the parking so it suits the the, the business the, you know, the ability to do the business. Whatever that might be, you know, 30 minutes may be good to pop into a, a, a little. Yeah, you know, it's not far, but it's not good enough to do a lot of things to see. So it takes it to have me now, just that you're seeing uh, will the part will be paid, uh, encourage people to do this different. Like, what, what um, so even if it's a very nominal, nominal amount that you're asking people to pay, people um, are more compliant. So they self-monitor their parking, so you actually get the turnover you're seeking. Um, whereas when you have time limits without them being paid for, um, you get half the turnover that you're actually seeking. So um, it's, not, it's not about revenue raising, it's more about actually Changing encouraging the behaviour that, okay. that you're seeking. So the point of parking controls is to
I think the other thought is that uh, when I have to use the example of the central market as a, as a uh, here is an opportunity for where we have been offering more now free and things like that. So we, um, uh, you know, and it is about being appropriate to what you're trying to encourage people to do. And if we are able to um, use something where we can uh, uh, encourage, you know, people to frequent the precinct, frequent as the businesses there, um, and enabling them to form some sort of relation, like the city forms some sort of relationship with the businesses in those various areas, that you can possibly work together. Um, to for, to reward people for shopping there, to to enable you know some form that you can some form of discount or something like that on the parking, and it relates to the improvement of, of visitations to the businesses etc. Um, and it's just that I can appreciate that they say that the smart meter the meters aren't uh, smart enough, particularly like in the central market car park for example. But if we have a way of of uh, uh, like you now have with your your parking uh, you know, cards. That we are encouraging people to uh, you know, be identified, to be able to use, uh, talk with them, and encourage them to give them benefits. At the same time, uh, enabling business to interact. In other words, we're we're enabling the precincts to get a much better a, a benefit for using uh, the, the parking as a, as also an attractor. And uh, you might be able to get you know that way you can sort of uh, mitigate sort of the negative aspect of. of Seven minutes. Right on time. Oh, you're the lecture in time. Walk in a Yeah, well, I did miss it. Thank you, members. Councillor Curie, the floor. Thanks. Thanks, Chair. Um, okay. Um, look, I think the reason we want to trial, the reason we want to trial, and the reason we want to encourage the app uh, is that it's a cost saving. Um, and a cost saving is obviously good for everyone. It's great for ratepayers. It's great for the city. Um, one of the uh, one of the many very good points raised uh, by the Lord Mayor, I thought, was that the phone, a phone replaces a credit card uh, as, a, as an object you've got to fish out of your wallet. Um, the other thing is that credit card readers, um, they, the expectation now is that parking machines are credit card readers. They present their own frustrations uh, as they jam up. Um, and we all know the issues with um, coin-operated machines. We've all had them jam up and honestly passed. Um, so I think I, I do think that the basis on which we we um, have pushed forward with the app, the, the reason we want to trial it and encourage it is, is quite manifest. Um, a question, actually, just perhaps crystallising what the Lord Mayor brought up: What is there any link between U Park Plus and the parking on street parking app at the moment? Through the chair, from a technology point, not at the no. moment. No. Okay, can, can that be leveraged? Could we make uh, U Park Plus uh, contingent on basically becoming a subscriber to the on street app? That's uh, interesting feedback, something we can look into as it would stand right now, not something we've um, looked into, other than making sure internally we're talking with U Park and on street parking. Okay, well, that, that, that's a suggestion um, that we, we use one to leverage use of the other. Um, perhaps if the if technology allows. Um, so that's one suggestion. Um, I think that, um, okay, uh, another question. Um, some of the roads that are being suggested we might consider uh, a shift to paid parking, which are not currently paid. I understand the roads like the ones running through the South Parklands. You have a lot of uh, people there parking. Are they mostly commuters um, and are there any grounds on which you could say that those roads comprise parking uh, parkers uh, who overall um, would be app users they're not predominantly elderly um, or, or how how would you have but basically how would you deal with that question because that is I mean I've seen the feedback and the, the negative feedback to that ties article um, I'll, I'll comment more about that but it, it was basically you know, the big one was look you've got older people who may struggle with using an ad are there roads or can you provide data that, that suggests that look the bulk of the users here uh, won't be troubled by a shift to an ad um, through the chair the short answer is no we don't know that from the, the cars that are parked there sure. now what we do what we do observe is that the cars parked on those parkland roads and on the edges of the city would appear to be commuters. They yeah. stay and they park yeah. almost all day. Yeah. Um, so one of the options is to um, to not convert all of that parking. Um, so we could 
with the child 50 yeah. percent or one yeah. side of the That's road it. and um and get feedback from yes. customers yeah. that way. Right. So that's, yeah. I guess this is the challenge. You trial it and yeah. see if it is yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's people, an obvious but thing. without surveying who's actually parking there every day, which is sure. probably. That, that, well, that's, that's a, I guess what I was driving at. How could we arrive uh, at determining what the what the makeup is, what that's that's yeah, really that's, that's, probably that's a very good answer. Testing it is probably yeah, the way to that's, do it. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that's what I was getting at. Um, so, look, um, <laughs> my view is that that sort of shift ought to, uh, it, it's all got to be driven towards making the whole system more efficient uh, and more aligned with the market overall. Uh, so if there is room to shift to paid parking, uh, particularly with our commuters, uh, and that allows us to reduce parking elsewhere, uh, that's got to be our imperative. It's got to be geared towards enabling us to reduce parking elsewhere. Uh, remembering that reduced parking elsewhere itself helps the elderly. Uh, if you consider the elderly, maybe pensioners or whatever, lower costs in parking overall itself is a, we, we can't look at um, detriment to say the elderly um, non-holistically. We've got to look at the overall picture. And making parking cheaper helps everyone. It helps the older, it helps the poor, uh, every, all of that. So um, that's that's kind of it. Look, that's basically the main point. I think we should proceed with, with investigating this. The app is making things cheaper. That is good. Um, one final left of centre suggestion for the app. Um, what about a lottery? One lucky user of the app gets a $100 voucher to spend uh, within the CBD, something like that. Um, so, because you've got the ability to do that very easily with an app, it's not an expensive thing. Um, so, incentives for the app are good, um, and, 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 and we, we do need to press forward in, in investigating this whole uh, rationalisation. Um, through the chair, um, it, it's not such a left of centre suggestion. Um, members might remember a couple of years ago, um, we provided U park vouchers to people who were parking compliantly on the street. So our parking officers, instead of walking around giving expiations to people who've done the wrong thing, they gave rewards and vouchers under the windscreens to people who were parking within the rules. So we've we've trialled incentives for compliance before, and we'd be really happy to do that sort of thing again. Fantastic. Thank you, Jesse. Uh, Councillor Kuros. Thank you, Chair. Um, I guess at this point in time, um, I wouldn't be keen on, you know, looking at increasing the amount of paid on street parking. I mean, it's um, we're in a, a market that, uh, you know, we, that businesses are hurting, and we want to encourage as many people as possible to come to the city, and we want, don't want it to be a deterrent to start saying, oh, we're going to make it difficult for you to get here. Regardless of what we said to the advertiser, people already got the preconceived conception that it's really hard to come into the city and we don't want to continue that negative effect. Um, so uh, that's my answer to that question. Um, I, um, I would like to continue with the um, app trial, um, you know, even expanding that, but giving people the two options though. Um, I don't want it to be just the, what, the app option. I don't think we're, it takes a transition and I do take on board the Lord Mayor's comment saying that maybe it is the way that we're communicating it. Maybe there's no awareness uh, of it. Um, so with everything new, there is a, a there is a, a an apprehension to of it being of the technology being used um, with technology just overall, uh, but also in saying that you know um, there are some people that just do not use their phones and are not app friendly, and we want to encourage everybody to come to the city, and we don't want to make that difficult for anyone. So that taking on board that, I like the comment that Councillor Sim says to give back an incentive and building it to our pathways, or whatever we can do within our parking. Um, I like that idea. Um, I don't like anything that encourages um, you know, changes into the city in that way. Um, but also in saying that, I mean, people are using their cars, I mean, not only because of their, whatever, the COVID reason, I hate using that, but also um, public transport's not that great. And, you know, that really needs to um, vamp up to encourage people to not want to come into the city. Um, um, to, uh, to uh, you know, they're using their cars because, you know, it just the, the transport system is not that great, which I'm sure hopefully that will get better. But 
and the Civic Connector bus is also very vital to encourage people not to be driving to our city. So um, they're just my thoughts. Um, I mean, I think there's been some very good commentary um, overall um, on this issue. Thank you, Councillor Perez. Now, Councillor Sims has hand up first, but Rob, just because we've spoken before, and um, Anne's keen to contribute. Councillor Moran? Uh, yes, look, I'll just make a few points. Um, it, there seems to be a confusion here. Some councillors are saying that, um, such as Robert Sims, saying that we could spend the extra revenue on bikeways and so forth. So that built in with that comment is that it will be a revenue raiser. And then other councillors, such as Councillor Kerr, are saying, oh, it's going to make it cheaper and everybody can afford, you know, afford to come to the city. You can't have it both ways. People see this as a revenue raising. You're introducing 400 and something paid car parks where, well, that, that's what you, could I ask you how many from no car park fees to car park fees? Well, so, sorry, can I also just ask the administration to clarify, there are multiple proposals before us. One of them could see a reduction when you're using the smart app. And the other one is a consideration in the last key question on increased cost rate. So if you could just clarify, please, Vanessa. Yeah, through the chair, they're, they're really just options for consideration. Yeah, so so they, it could be one I extra bay, 400 extra bay, no But the confusion comes when you turn on the radio all day today and the Lord Mayor and the Deputy Lord Mayor are talking about increasing paid car parking in the city. That is the thing that people are interested in. Apps, maps, nothing. I totally agree with Mary that during the uh, pandemic to even countenance increasing it by nearly 500 paid car parking and then to say that that helps turnover. So, I mean, this is not my first radio. Everything in this room is leading towards putting non-paid car, paid car parks in non-paid areas. Uh, so but let's get that on the table. I don't want any more paid car parks in the city during this lean time. The app is not proven to be cost effective. I mean, there's nothing, um, as Helen always says, evidence-based decision-making. There is no evidence for that. Um, this this started um, council ago, and Vanessa, you remember, uh, when Hassan and I suggested that we follow the New York model of parking, where there are no time zones at all. We regulate turnover with, um, with pay. And it's, it's morphed into something different now. The apps have really attracted the boys Boys Toys Group. Um, people don't not don't not use the app because they they can't use their smartphone necessarily. What people don't like, and um, Vanessa, you've completely underlined that, is the fact that if they park in a thirty minute parking zone, if there's not a sticker lick around, they might get a few extra minutes. If you've got the app, they know that you're being tracked, and the minute you're up that sticker lick is there or whoever, or it's, it's lodged, or you, that, or you pay more. So that is the big disincentive. Um, so it is not a cost saving. It intrinsically has a flaw in it because it means you can't get away with extra time. Um, time uh, Vanessa was saying also that you can't monitor turnover. It, it's ineffective with time zones. Well, can you see the subtext here? If we had more sticker lickers, lowly paid, necessary jobs, we could monitor turnover with more parking inspectors. This, like our car parks, is getting rid of our workforce. We, are, we, we do not need parking inspectors if we have apps. And that is a very, like in our car parks, we got rid of actual people. I think that's a, that's a terrible thing. You can monitor turnover with time. Uh, yes, parking respect has become redundant. Um, you will raise a lot more revenue, of course, that's why we're doing it. Um, suggesting that we have app only um, and we actually, or we discount the app is, is directly working against vulnerable, poor, old people. You're giving the riches in their Ferrari, their Merc, with their smartphone that can dial up you're giving them a discount and you're not giving the person that goes in. Sorry, could I have a gap by oh, so music? Yeah. Could you explain why you're starting? No, no, no. I'm sure we're all like, amusing, Tom. We'd like to just continue, would you? Why is it amusing that you're um you're favouring we'll, we'll, we'll stay on topic and members will not talk at each other across the chamber. We'll stay on topic, Councilman has ten more seconds.
Everybody else has had five Everybody else has had five, ten minutes. minutes. Yeah. So, as I said, you are rewarding people who have. It really seconds. is one rule for one. 30, 30, 30, 30 seconds on the house. house. This isn't the way standing yeah. orders say the meetings are run. Yeah, you just you run it any, any way you like, don't you? I just keep talking as long as I like. Thanks, like everybody else says. Uh, so, you're working against the vulnerable people that are not tech savvy, and you're giving a cheaper park to somebody who is, okay, I won't use the word younger, tech savvy and probably a lot wealthier. So I think it's a shocking thing to do. Um, making, I don't know, just to repeat the, the ridiculousness of the phrase that making parking cheaper by putting in more expensive apps and more paid parking is ridiculous. And how anybody could say that helps old people um, and in parking zones, it, it is a complete nonsense to me. This is not what Assam and I started out meaning. It is, I think, um, but I can understand it's not, not your fault because various councils have shifted it. The smart app really attracted, you know, we can put monitors on the road. Um, people won't use it because they miss out then on the lucky chance of getting a bit of extra time in a, in a, in a time zone. So I wouldn't use it. Um, you can give a $100 prize. <laughs> And also, that, Vanessa, I want to correct you on one thing. The thing we did do was instead of giving a person a parking fine, we gave them a, uh, a, a thing under their um, windscreen wipers saying you would have got a $47 fine today, but it's, it's happy parking day or something like that. Yeah. And I have no recall of what you're suggesting, and I, I wouldn't have approved it if it had. But how do you know somebody's parking legitimately? Uh, they haven't got a parking fine. Vanessa. Yeah, sorry, through the chair. Um, I'm not sure what initiative you're referring to, Councillor Moran. It may have predated me, but the one that that we led um, was providing people with U Park vouchers when they were parking legally. So how did we know that? Mm -hmm. um, they might, for example, have had a paid ticket in their window, and they were within the time, still within the time frame of that ticket, and so they got a U Park voucher. That's it. For example, well, that never came through council, Vanessa, and I don't think it would be a winner, really. It was unfair, unfair um, training practice to anyone who applauded. Anyway, I, I hadn't heard of that one. I don't think so. Okay. But, yeah. yeah, a much better one was the one that was administrative for quite poorly, where we gave people a free pass and said, if you haven't... Thank you, Councillor Moran. We'll leave the promotional discussion to the marketing and comms team. Um, Councillor Sims, followed by Councillor Donovan. Thanks, and I know this is a second bite of the cherry, so I'll be brief. I just wanted to tease out the discussion a bit more about um, hypothecated um, spending in a way, because it does seem there's a bit of support for that concept, which I think is really good. I guess um, I just want to express my concern around that being used in such a way that it could be seen as incentivising uh, car travel um, rather than other forms of travel. And I guess that's why I think the the idea of saying that, you know, increased revenue is going to be spent on um, cycling infrastructure or the free city connector bus is attractive, or maybe even tree planting or something like that in the CBD, because it recognises the um, impact of uh, car travel on carbon emissions and the impact that, that has on some of Council's other goals. So I think when we're talking about hypothecating the funding, um, we should keep that in mind and look at, is there an environmental outcome that we can achieve um, through this increased revenue? And in terms of the, the question about um, providing a reward or incentive for people to come into the city in terms of the voucher they can spend at local business, I think that's a great idea, but I think that should be provided for all um, forms of travel. So, you know, if we're going to go down that path, I think we should talk to DIPT about having some sort of scheme in place whereby we could reward bus travel into the CBD so that then it's not incentivising car travel over um, public transport. And in fact, it's a, it's a broader package that is supporting people to come into the city in general. And um, so I just wanted to make those comments. And I guess the other um, element of the, the paper that I found attractive was this idea of charging differential um, fees based on um, periods of uh, traffic. Um, I thought it's a good idea because I understand that's been used in other parts around the world. 
as a way of actually trying to get people to think differently about transport in peak times. Um, and it's a, a traffic management um, approach as well. So um, I think that's something that could be um, looked at in a bit more detail. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Donovan. Thanks, Jeff. Um, I think the, we can probably use some of the learning from other um, uh, mobility platforms as per your recommendation to get greater uptake of the um, download of the app. And given the recent examples of things like the e-scooters and the rapid uptake and how they did use incentives, I think as you've suggested, um, as one of the options, it does make a lot of sense to use a price-based incentive to get people to download, whether that's giving free parking or low-cost parking. Um, I think we need to make sure that we don't fall victim to the superficial clickbaity narrative of things like some of the media that has been um, promulgated recently, uh, and instead go back to what the evidence does suggest as per all of the research that you have provided, as per the countless examples that you have provided that show that, for example, um, in areas where we provide free or low cost parking, it is commuters who primarily use it, so they are not bringing additional value to our city businesses. And therefore, to use things like an expansion of paid parking using a um, differential rate, you know, where, where it makes sense, uh, actually gets better outcomes for city businesses. I do appreciate what um, other members have uh, mentioned in terms of the optics right now um, and being aware of what the optics are in that regard whilst we're going through what we're going through. Um, and it can be a difficult um, narrative to actually explain the nuance of it, that this, is, this brings better benefit to business. Um, but I think, yeah, we need to ensure that we don't just get pulled into the reactivity of that very superficial um, commentary and that we actually go back to the numbers and look at what's going to get the better outcomes um, for businesses, for the community, uh, and also in terms of ensuring that we are utilising without falling victim to the sunk cost fallacy of what we've already invested in the in the app, assuming that we are going to, that we do see that there's benefit in continuing with it, that there are examples around the world, I presume, where it is highly successful, that we do continue to find ways to get the downloads so that people are utilising that and we're getting the um, benefit of the investment that we've made to date. One question, um, I know when I first used the app, I actually did not find it very straightforward. Um, that was a little while ago. Uh, my memory of it was went to location. Uh, it was not, there was, it was not really easy to find the park that I pulled into. Has there been some tweaking of the app? I presume probably multiple, probably much since then, which was when it was first downloaded to make it simpler or getting, getting some feedback from users to, to ensure that it's really easy to use so that they're not just using it for navigation? Yes, so um, short answer that, and that's part of the reason we didn't promote it early on, um, it was soft promotion I should say, so there have been a lot of improvements, there's still things we are actively doing to continually uh, continually improve it, um, uh, so yes, and we'll continue to do that to, to make sure the experience is great. And, and we're asking for user feedback, yes, we, you, thank you, yes. excellent, so that would be my thinking, yes, differential parking, yes, expand the pay parking, uh, because we know it's going to be beneficial um, and yes, discounts and incentives to uh, get greater uptake of the app in the first instance. Thank you, Helen. Councillor Martin. Um, yeah, look, uh, just briefly, I want to ask a, a couple of quick questions, but I do want to reinforce what was said. The problem with uptake of the app is if you have the app, you will get a ticket. If you don't have the app, there's a chance you can beat the system, and that's the fundamental flaw in the system. However, I would ask a question of the Sorry, administration. I just want to clarify that statement, Vanessa. Could you? Because I haven't noticed that Through mentioned the chair, anywhere. We're monitoring the parking in exactly the same way for if you're using the app or the ticket machine. So we're providing the same um, approach to monitoring for both. Um, well, look, uh, perhaps my understanding is incorrect. If you have the app and you're using a sensor, then you receive uh, a warning that you are uh, 
that twinker find that you can buy an additional time period, which is 15 minutes, after which there is no option. Is that correct? That's correct, but in order to be expiated, a parking and information officer still needs to come to that zone and expiate the vehicle. So they're approaching the expiations of um, smart parking paid parks in the same way as they are the ticket machines or the unpaid parking zones. And this, and this is important then, if... And sorry, through the chair, it was really important um, it was really important that we took that approach when we launched the technology so that people would feel more trust in using the technology and not believe that we were going to be running out from behind the corner because we'd seen on the app, hooray, it's gone into red and now we can expect that people, that's not how we're approaching it. And if you are parking in an area which has no sensor and no app, you can play that game it's less likely that you will incur a ticket because it requires an inspector to be there. Is that correct? Um, through the chair, an inspector, a parking and information officer, which is their actual title, um, we, prefer, we try to use that if we can. A parking and information um, officer, yes. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Um, it just they do get a lot of disrespectful names, and I just want to make sure that we are respecting the people that do the work. Um, no, no, and I'm, I'm not, not suggesting yours as being disrespectful, no, but they have been, and the commentary in the EU is often disrespectful too. So I just want to make sure we're not um, sustaining that here. Um, the, for the, the monitoring of the parking when it's not paid requires an officer to visit that location twice. Um, they don't have to do that. They do not have to visit a location twice, whether if you pay via a ticket or via the app. So the monitoring in a paid parking zone is the same, whether you've paid via a ticket or an app. Because they can see that you've expired the time, either because your ticket says on your windscreen says that you have, or your payment on the app says that you have. But does one, one requires a visit? Uh, they all require visits. So, so to issue an expiation, we still have to put an expiation on a vehicle. So it requires an officer to visit the zone and the vehicle to expiate that vehicle. Yes, but they're, they're shown that, that if they went there, there's an expi a ticket to be expiated. Otherwise, they're just going there because there might be. This comes up on their phone saying somebody has gone into the red at this thing. Then he has to go there. Sorry. Through the chair, they have to they do they have to visit the zones anyway because they're paid parking zones and so they visit those zones anyway. They can see if a car has overstayed. That's absolutely true in the app, but they do have to visit I think the zone. The question the, the question is uh, where there is information that the parking information officers have um, in front of them. Do they then change their schedule? For, for making visits in the city and checking on all the other cars. So do they do they dispatch themselves more expeditiously to expiate a vehicle that's used the app and run over time? The answer to that is no. So right. when they're that's, in a paid parking zone, they're either looking in the windscreen to see if there's a ticket or they're looking at the app to see if someone's paid. What's the point yep. of the app? Excellent. No, that's it. That settles the matter. So the and, point of the app, Councillor no. Moran, was to provide an enhanced customer on-street experience and put the choice. Do you remember we were looking to be an expiation-free city under the last um, strategic plan. It was an aspirational goal. One way to achieve that was by putting the choice back in the hand of the customer. So this was a unique element associated with the smart parking app. Um, to avoid a um, expiation, people could choose to park, um, choose to purchase a top up price. With all due respect, so that, that, that hasn't happened, has it? It's slowly happening. We've got a slight but extension, but we've not become an expiation. City. In fact, we've become a much more efficient city in delivering expiations. No, I disagree, Councillor. 
That's I'm not sorry, good. I'm really well, okay. wait, and we're going that's, to... that's a really good option for council members really is to come on the street and walk with our parking information officers. Um, during induction in previous councils, we've offered that to council members. It actually gives you a really good insight into the approach that our parking and information officers do. Um, and it's a really good way to understand how we manage our on-street parking. So I really are, encourage you if you'd like. Well, I beg your pardon, Councillor Moran. I think we understand. It's not. It's not a difficult thing to understand. If this doesn't make it more efficient to turn up, <laughs> Vanessa said this makes turnover much more efficient. The way it makes it more efficient is because you will be expiated more efficiently. Therefore, you will respectfully move your car. If it doesn't do that, what on earth is the point? Councillor Moran, I don't think that was the point. I think the point was that where people pay for it they self-regulate more thoroughly. Correct. Okay, so how is this going to improve that? How is the app now going to improve the experience? But that, that, well, that, sorry, sorry Councillor Moran, that's a separate point. There's, there's the app only yeah. trial Thank you for, correct. for Thank particular you for areas. Correct. And then there's the expansion okay. of on-street parking, which was not necessarily envisaged with the app or otherwise. Um, but look, we'll go back to Councillor Martin because he was making- I was uh, going some, to ask a question. Yes, yes please. Thank you. Thank you. And look, uh, I have a terrible admission to make. I do not have the app. Uh, and I regularly park in paid parking spaces in the city and I get away with overstaying. Um, so the sorry, system sorry, is not the Councillor account. Martin, you have, I, you I have the City of Adelaide sticker, sticker on your car that well, allows you to park in those spots. No, so I'm, I'm not. No, you parked behind me the other day. I'm not going to let that comment. I'm not going to let that comment go unchallenged. That is the reason why you're not getting fired. I am saying to you, Deputy Lord Mayor, I understand you don't have the pay. I pay for parking in the city. When I come into the city on business, I pay. On occasions, as happened the other week, or this week, in fact, when I was visiting a solicitor, I was delayed. I got away with it. Because you got a sticker. Yeah, yeah. You're not supposed to use your sticker when you no. oh. <laughs> What did, am, am I being no, Sorry, sorry. councillors. This is councillors. Really members, members, please, please. Councillor Martin, I think, had a question buried in there. Did I did, the I did. And I now have another one. And that is to say, are my colleagues here telling me that they yeah, park all over the city? Yeah abusing their stickers to get free parking. No, because they're very clear on the rules. The rules are you have to They're very clear on the rules. But if we can please get to your question, Councillor Mark. I feel like my question is, um, look, I, I, um, I know that the Lord Mayor is always right. Um, otherwise, you wouldn't be a Lord Mayor. But um, I do want to check, um, just for my own sanity, um, the assertion that there has been no increase, will be no increase in parking fees on street or off street in 2021. Is there a proposal in the budget for any increase for on street parking in 2021 or for off street parking? So I will let administration do that, but councillor, we approved that through the budget process when we did fees and charges. Did we? Yes. We've approved increases. No, we've approved no increases. We, we approved freezing the rates to the 1920s, so there are no increases in the next financial year. Thank, thank you. I'm asking yeah. the question. Thank you. And can I have an answer from the administration? So, Has there been no increase in any off-street parking fee for U parks during the course of 2021 from 1st of July, for example? Sorry, that was off street. Have each one on street? I said street on street, street and off street. That I was can his. certainly talk to on street, um, okay. which were the fees and charges for on street were held at 1920 for the full. And we defeated 20, the proposal 21. to increase weekend fees and so on. Um, Whatever it is in 1920 holds right through to 2021. 20, okay. In terms of on street fees and charges. And so off whatever. street? I'd need to confirm off street. Well, the, the man who knows is sitting there. I'm happy to hear from him. He's more than happy to come over. Oh, that's good. It's always good to hear from the group. Good <coughs> evening, everyone. Um, through the chair, um, UPark Plus, which is a different product to UPark, has more flexibility in its pricing. So there has been some changes to UPark Plus since it was enacted. Increases. Increases. Thank it you. wasn't. It wasn't eight dollars yes. down from. 
in some new parks, thirty odd dollars to day went down to eight, and from in some of those car parks because basically they were full and having a negative impact on traders because city workers were clogging them up essentially. Um, there has been some changes to price points from say eight dollars to ten dollars or twelve dollars on the U Park Plus in initiative only, which is still a heavily discounted price to pre U Park Plus being initiated. Okay, you're absolutely, no, you're absolutely right about there has been a change to U Park Plus from eight dollars to ten or twelve. Yeah, and has there been an increase in two to three hours in some car parts? I'd have to double check that one to be honest, Councillor. From first of July. I'd have to double check that one on the impact costs. All right. Sorry, well, look, my contention is there as well. Excellent. Uh, I did have a story, Councillor Noll, and then Councillor Hoy, then Councillor Kira. Yeah, um, just as number one, Ms. Basim. That's not. Um, just as a question now. With uh, we talk about the home inspector having to mark the tyres, etc. I mean, I mean, I have been in Europe, and they've got the clocks on the uh, that you have to put on the dash, and you put a time on that clock when you when you park there, and uh, obviously that's how they regulate. And there's the it's a thing by every service station. It's just a, a simple plastic clock that you put on there, putting the times that you have arrived, or the time which have arrived, or when you when you uh, the time is up, and. Uh, the park inspector walks past and sees it uh, as set because you're not in the car and you've set it as you've left the car. So that's what they do in the number, quite a few of the cities uh, in Europe. Um, just a question, yes, I do agree. The perception of the, of, the, of the app would be that you would get Ian Weasley fined. That's just would be human nature. So I mean, that your attitude certainly is, is, is one that would have needed to be promoted better. But how do you do that when nobody listens uh, to these sorts of things anyway? But it, it, um, and the other is, if, it's, if you're going to uh, give people some, some, um, some comfort, then perhaps you automatically have inherently in that app uh, as some spare time. And you say, well, this, this is the time, but I will give you 15 minutes uh, extra so that uh, you take away that, that apprehension and then you give it a bit of space. I guess you can buy it. I'm not talking about buying more time. I'm saying inherently here's the time and you have a 15 minute window. Um, so through the chair, we do currently build in some extra time in the app now. So you'll see when you when you download it and you purchase your parking, you'll see you get some extra minutes already. So we, they're, they're the types of things that we can consider. And help people to understand that because that all makes it easier. Excellent. Thank you, France. Simon? Um, <coughs> try it again. Blow it up. Are the rest of us still work? Did you want to see if you can use the one next to you, Councillor? Yeah. yeah, this one works. So you might want to switch that one off. I think it is. I think it's flashing it's because it's going yeah, it's not working. <laughs> Bad luck. Anyway. Look, like, I mean, as you all know, I don't always agree with Councillor Maroon and Councillor Martin, but in this one, I actually like what I have got in mind is actually quite in line with what they what they believe. First, the first thing here is about the messages to send to the public about increased more, I mean, convert about 400 or 500 like, um, I mean, free car park to pay car park. It, this, is the, this is one of those messages that I don't want to send to the public because like, we are in a very difficult moment and also like a lot of people in the public, they will not actually look at the details. How many, how many seconds you will actually like to read the whole paper? You just read the headlines and basically saying that the CBD is not welcoming. This is the negative messages that I, I have framed that like we will send to the public by I mean, having more pay car parts in the CBD. Second, about the app. In the very beginning, time, I think it was even before the council turn. This is what I heard about the app, and immediately, like my precision is exactly like what customer Moran have raised. If I use the app, I only get thirty minutes. That's it. If I pay on a thirty, 30 minutes pay pay day, if I use a ticket and pay for it and put something on my front screen, quite often I don't know about period trip. Right, maybe I can get 35 minutes instead of 30. But on Google Street, quite often I can get another 15 minutes. 
and I can get away with it. Right? This is the precision. Of course, I have been parking on Franklin Street for six years, and I've been parking on Wuja Street for some time before I have the sticker, the council stickers on my car. All right, so I have a lot of experience and I mean park on those like I mean pay car park and other car parks because I, I also live in the city once upon a time. And I this is the precision that I, I have framed a lot of the customers of our business will have. Because like I said, the people from the public are not going to read a lot of details. It is about the precision they have. Well, I'm gonna pay more if I use the app. Right, so this is, and, and by the way, like, because looking at the return over the last 16 months, it's only 180,000. Understand that a lot of people might use the app, not just, I mean, to pay for the parking, they use the app to search the pay, I mean, the parking bay, or that's a, something like a bonus. But we invest 3 million on this system, and we only get like 180,000 out of it, I mean, in 16 months. Do we have to do it now? I mean, do we have to do it during the pandemic? Do we have to do it while our financial position is so, oh, I wouldn't call it unhealthy, but it's certainly not as good as before, all right? So this, I mean, still open-minded, this is the workshop. My decision has not been made. I have got a lot of questions that I might need to ask the administration offline, all right? In terms of, like, say, how much more will it cost us to have the whole, I mean, all the parking bay with a sense in our city? How, how long would it take? Because really to achieve, to achieve what we really want to achieve, you can't just have a portion of the parking bay have the sensor, whereas the, the rest of it don't have a sensor. And or this is something that I try to find out. Thank you. Councillor Kerry. Thanks, Chair. Briefly, um, I think the issue raised by Councillor Ho and others that the um, we have that that uh, difference. You you can take a punt uh, with a parking ticket, uh, whereas the app you're not uh, given that punt. I think that's that's um, that that's all the more reason. Uh, that's all the more reason to have differential parking rates. So to have the app uh, present a cheaper uh, parking rate than the on-street parking, which means you will evaluate the difference between perhaps getting a fine, but you will actually with the app see that you get a cheaper rate um, and that's it, you're going to have to leave at the end. And I think I think that's very clearly the, 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 the thing to overcome there. Um, I just want to make very clear the administration that I think that um, the basis on which the investigation and the proposals are investigated uh, must be geared towards uh, reducing the overall cost of parking. Um, it's certainly from my perspective, you can walk, you can walk and chew gum, uh, you can investigate. I think some very good sober comments from Councillor uh, Donovan in this respect. Um, you, you, you can be either completely reactionary and not forge ahead with a reform that makes things more efficient, uh, or you can actually proceed in a way that makes things cheaper for everybody in parking. This, this can be uh, a non-cash grab rationalisation of our parking. And to the other issue about the timing, well, I think that unfortunately, um, unless we adopt a very proactive, a very spearheaded approach with publicity, and a, dare I say, united approach in saying, well, look, this is actually about reducing costs overall. Uh, first, you will get publicity in the media saying, well, parking has gone up in certain areas here and there. The the thing about timing is though, the um, all of the economic forecasts suggest uh, that the problem is going to continue well into the future. The, the pandemic is not just going to be over in six months or a year. Mm -hmm. All of the economic trouble strife is going is yet to come. It's going to come when there's all of these um, uh, interest rates that are interest loans that are due. Yeah. Y yes. So if I'm finished, so there's six months of deferral of interest rates for business. Okay, that that all comes due all of a sudden down the track. Then there's uh, there's also all of the um, uh, there's the issue of the crystallising or the, the, the ossifying of people leaving the city for working, so worked from home. So the suburbs are gonna see an influx, and there's gonna be an outflux of people. It's all the more reason for us now to rationalise our parking in a way that allows us to make it cheaper overall. And I think uh, from my perspective, we shouldn't be um, not looking at options because we are too afraid of messaging right now, uh, because we've got to get this um, done, uh, this rationalising done as soon as possible overall, because we're the, the, the hard stuff's yet to hit, in my opinion. Thank you. Vanessa, could you respond? 
Um, through the chair, yes, I do just want to acknowledge I do understand the feedback around the reticence to use the app because people might be worried about being expiated. And um, one of the, I just want to also then remind everyone that it was one of the reasons that we um, sought legislative change and um, allowed for the extend stay part of the app. So that is actually, we're the only place in the country that allows that kind of thing. Um, and that's so that provides people the opportunity to stay beyond the time limit. And I get that it costs, but it's $5.50 as opposed to a $56 expiation. Well, so but it we, could, we could make that, oh, that is, that's only available on the app. So you can extend your stay no, no, no. only with the app. Can we make it we cheaper? We can make it cheaper if you use the app than then if you park on the street. Uh, so you don't have yes overall, but the extend stay option is actually only available yeah. for the app users. So it was designed to try to um, to help people to avoid an expiation. So the overall cost of them parking there and overstaying should still be less by being able to extend state, but I completely take on board the perception that it still makes it easier for us to expiate, but we have tried to provide different options so that people can avoid that in the first place. So customers have more choice to avoid an expiation if they use the app than if they're using a machine. Because be they can be extend better, their state. It's still better if you just make it cheaper using the app. Fantastic. Which All we right. can do. Yeah. Councillor Hope. Sorry, Chair, I, I, I'm not very interested in coming to the debate and I, I wish you would not consider this as a debate. I mean, I just like to finish my the, the point that like, I missed like, while, while I speak. I, I, I don't think this is even fair to have the app like to have any discounts or lottery stuff, all right? I, I don't believe it. I'm completely against this idea, I must say. This is unfair to people who are not very used to it with smartphones or people who, I mean, have language barriers or even people in the older age. Because like, I mean, even for people like myself, I'm not sure whether I'm using I'm an old, old fellow or young fellow, but I am not interested in downloading any more apps that I need to get used to it, need to, need to learn it. I already got 25 apps on my phone. And why do I need, why do I be bothered to make it 26? And I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be able to imagine that like I need to educate my parents to download the phone and use it. I mean, uh, on one side, I need to teach them English. On the other side, I need to teach them how to use the, use the app. I find it very difficult. And it, this is kind of unfair to people from, from that kind of background. All right, so thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ho. Do we have the app in other languages or is that possible, possible with it? Mm -hmm. Uh, not at the moment, but it's certainly something. So the app's being used in different countries. So the provider we use is used in different countries. So we don't have it available in other languages, but it's certainly something we can look at. Yeah, it'd be nice if you could investigate that and come back to us. Thank you. <coughs> Members, any other contributions? All right, I might just make um, uh, a few... Hang on. Um, just up. Comments? Yes, I know you're timing me, Phil. Thank you. Um, I do like the assistance. If you could keep your colleague in line, that'd be great. Um, uh, look, I'll address these Address these perhaps in reverse order. Um, uh, what are members' views on increasing the amount of paid parking uh, on street in the city? Um, absolutely not. Um, uh, at the moment, uh, I don't think un under any circumstances uh, in the middle of a recession, or even at the beginning of a recession, we should be considering um, uh, tinker tinkering with the mix uh, of paid on-street parking bays in the city of Adelaide. Um, uh, while 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 I make that point, though, I would just highlight that um, I'm very grateful for you bringing this to our attention and us having a meaningful discussion about it. Um, uh, I think us and the and the rest of Western civilization will rue the day that comments in articles are actually used to create public policy. And I think it would be a pretty awful set of policies that are created just off of the rantings and ravings of a few people commenting on articles on the internet. Um, uh, that would be a very bad day indeed. Um, so it's important that we have this discussion. I do take members' uh, 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 points about perception as well. Um, I, think it's, I think it's very, very important, but, but, uh, what will really pay dividends is if you get good policy made 
and implement it. And uh, yes, you might take a few hits in doing that, but if you can get it made and implemented, the benefits will be there for the long term. And that's what I think this is about. And when it comes to good policy, um, that brings me to the next two questions. Um, uh, Differential pricing, or what I'm, I've labelled demand discount pricing, not surge pricing, uh, I think is a good idea, uh, but I think it should uh, solely be used to reduce rates in particular areas, not to increase rates in particular areas, so that where there is lower demand on street, we can drop the price. Uh, where there is higher demand, the price will be capped and will remain at that, pri at that price point. It should not go beyond that. Um, and then when it comes to messaging, if we do that, then we can tell people that in areas of low demand, we're dropping the price. Uh, and I think that's a good thing. Uh, when it comes to the app only uh, paid parking zones, um, I encourage members to look at, um, at the slides that highlight precisely where these, uh, these potential locations are. They're ostensibly on parklands roads. Um, uh, now, members who are familiar with, with the people that park on those roads would know that they're by and large the exact same people that park in the same spot every weekday. They put on their sneakers along with their office attire and they walk six, seven, eight hundred metres into the city. Now, notwithstanding that's a horrible fashion choice, and that's what they do every day. They park in the same spot um, uh, and these are people who by and large would have smartphones available to them. It's merely a habitual change. It actually may be more beneficial to them in their daily routine. If they can book into a bay, grab that spot, and then head on into the city and into work from there. So, uh, and so that that I think is important when we're thinking when we're thinking about uh, who uses this. We're not necessarily looking at the zones that are highlighted. We're not necessarily targeting uh, or proposing that it apply to uh, uh, car parks in the CBD for casual in and out parking, pop into the IG on Hutt Street to get some milk. That's not the proposal um, uh, at all. So uh, I think that's the context that needs to be read in. And uh, on that note, I think the proposal before us uh, is great. I also think uh, vast potential considering the reduced costs in uh, maintaining the parking meters. Um, we can have uh, parking information officers visiting these areas less and focusing on other areas in the city uh, to ensure that people are compliant with the law. Um, that's a very good outcome as well. Uh, and conversely as well, what's mooted there is potentially a 25% uh, decrease in parking fees. I think that that is absolutely fantastic. If we can get a decrease in parking fees, uh, that's ultimately you know, the gold standard that we should all be going for. Increase efficiency through innovation um, uh, and we can increase uh, the experience for customers and decrease costs. Uh, and I think that's fantastic. So once again, um, thank you for the, for the discussion points. And just one question, um, uh, uh, it was raised and it's not the first time it's been raised with me. We're thinking about smart parking and it's asking for general views on policy relating to on-street parking. The changeover of signs around events, particularly around North Adelaide, War Memorial Drive and Adelaide Oval was raised uh, again publicly on the radio with me this morning. I know it's been raised with other members as well. Um, how does that operate? Who changes the signs over? Is it possible for us to get other teams in council like the rapid response teams to change signs over on a more frequent basis? Excuse um, me, excuse you me like that, you're please? reacting to media. Um, it's an issue that's been raised before. Oh, yeah. In fact, it was when you when you're done, councillors, <laughs> uh, please. Yeah, very interesting. We'll take off the so it's currently um, we manage it internally now by a public mm -hmm. realm team, depending on when. Um, it needs to happen. There can be you know, penalties and overtime rates with that, um, but it's something um, it's something we can look into and work on how we go going forward. But currently, we manage that. Yeah, I'd be very pleased if we if we could if we could look at that and the, the timing of change. I know there's a bit of a lag there, but you know if it's if it's the, the major part of a day, but the event only applies to a small part of a day. And I think obviously it needs to be installed ahead of time, and there are constraints with doing that, but I think it's something we need to bear in mind for the customer experience. I think um, through you, the feedback this morning on the media was that um, it was the following morning that was the issue. So the event finishes late at night and that the parking controls hadn't been changed back by 
6.30 a.m. or something the following morning so we can look into whether that's whether we're able to do a faster turnaround time. Thank you. Was, did that elicit any other? Because it usually does. Splendid. All right. Uh, not quite an hour and a half. So good work, everyone. Thank you, Vanessa, and thank you, Steve. Well, thank you, members, for such considered contributions to a hot policy topic. I uh, will now invite in Christy to talk about Adelaide's Christmas Festival 2020. Thank you, Christy. Hello, members. Good evening. Tonight we oh, I'm sorry, Christy, we'll be taking this red, but if there's anything yes, you yes, wanted to right. particularly I highlight. I had to take pages of red. You've got 90 seconds. Um, so we'll be running through a little workshop with you in relation to the pages of Christmas. Um, this workshop is, in, is in response to the 19th of November 2019 motion on notice regarding the review of Christmas in the city. Um, with Christmas in the city strategy 2014 to 18 at the end of its life, we've now started to develop a new strategy for 2021 to 24. And tonight we'll provide you with a quick summary of the pre-reading that you've received and we'll run an online poll everywhere survey to seek your feedback. Your thoughts will help inform the proposed deliverables for Christmas 2020 and the draft festival, Christmas Festival Plan 21 to 24, which will be presented to Council for consideration in early 2021. So to take you through the history of Christmas, I'm going to hand over to me. <laughs> Thank you, Christy, through the presiding member. Good evening, members. Um, in order to give you some insight into how we have come to the proposed outcomes and deliverables for Christmas, um, it's important to give you, uh, provide you with an understanding of where we've been. The 14 to 18 Christmas in the City strategy has four distinct pillars. Um, these pillars being infrastructure, which had a focus on decorations, Christmas trees. Sorry, sorry, no, no, I was yes. going to take all these as, as yes. well. Oh, you were taking it. Was just, it was just if you had anything oh, okay. particularly important. We've learned some lessons from this, which we're about to tell you about. <laughs> um, yeah. We, would you like to know the lessons we've learned? Yeah. yeah well, oh, that, oh, I can actually. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Can, I get a, can I get a feel from the room? Yeah. 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 I want to hear that. Very, very condensed. Yes. 20 to 30 yes. seconds per slide, no longer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, lessons learned. Um, just the key ones that we've learned over the past few years is, is that there's a greater need for balancing day and nighttime experiences. Um, and activations with a stronger focus on the nighttime economy um, to ensure that the city experience at Christmas for visitors, businesses and the community is consistent. So there needs to be a more collaborative approach across Christmas in the city from a marketing, retail and events perspective. And we also have some amazing assets in the city um, and there's a real opportunity to leverage these such as the use of the Adelaide Town Hall. Um, and we need to have a greater focus on early engagement with businesses, the precincts and community, including cultural organisations and creative industries. Um, the lesson, if I'll just go to the next. Yep, the lessons that we've learned, um, we, can, we hope to continue to build on these um, for this year and beyond. And the proposed approach is for us to engage early with community groups, creative industries, um, and this will help inform our approach for 2020 and also the draft Christmas festival plan for 2021, which we propose to bring to you in early 2021 for consideration. So we accept, as you all do, that this has been a very difficult year for everyone. And uh, we would like to really skip forward and hope that the Christmas festival sparks some joy. We, we think that um, direct funding to businesses and precincts to deliver Christmas experiences in their areas and through the Christmas Incentive Scheme, we will be able to deliver Christmas engaging everyone. We're proposing to help to bring the city, its business precincts and the community back to life through the magic of Christmas by acknowledging and celebrating what we have and to spread hope, love, peace, joy and cheer. 
So <laughs> the connection between Adelaide and its festivals is a harmonious one as we are renowned as the um, <coughs> Adelaide, Australia's best festival city. So we propose that actually it's a, a, a festival event that so starts on the 1st of November when the lights go in the mall. Yeah. It encourages, uh, it has the fun of Christmas land of the town hall with the pageant and then continues every day until Christmas Day. So we believe that the new way of collaborating and branding Christmas as a festival is important because it allows for the direct funding of Christmas of city businesses and precincts to be involved in Christmas experiences. It generates spending retail and hospitality. It delivers coordinated season of daily summer activity and nightly attractions and provides a platform for collaboration with creative partners who we uh, work with all year round to create a Christmas experience. So to help us build um, a plan for this uh, Christmas festival and beyond, we have developed four outcomes. We Outcome one, as you have seen in the pack, speaks directly to supporting city business and creatives, such as, for example, live music in, in retail premises. Outcome two is about creating visitor destination, such as the pageant and potentially pageant exhibition at the um, town hall. Outcome three relates to signature event, events, including lighting of the Christmas tree. And outcome four speaks to leveraging our existing partnerships to build on Christmas experiences, such as working with cultural institutions. So Noni will be asking for your feedback and thoughts on those outcomes, perhaps the order which is most important to you, in a, in a second. But I'll also run through the key deliverables because we've identified this set of deliverables to be funded through the business plan and budget for Adelaide's Christmas Festival. So the Christmas in, uh, incentive scheme and the Adelaide Town Hall as a hub as a Christmas destination are both new concepts. The Christmas Incentive Scheme seeks directly to support and fund precincts, business and artists to activate the city with unique experiences. For example, we could program carolers or live music, community events, clusters of lit up uh, shop front windows. We could have charitable gift wrapping. We can actually have events in the squares, whatever we would, people would like to do through an incentive scheme that will run through the community and cultural team. The scheme creates opportunities for community events and contributes to council's outcomes of thriving communities. With regards to the Adelaide Town Hall as a Christmas destination, preliminary discussions have happened already with the uh, with SATC, as we know, part of Christmas lands here, and the idea that the Town Hall then becomes an exclusive Christmas pageant exhibition has been raised, and although um, nothing set in stone, as we seek your feedback on each of these deliverables, um, they're very keen to focus on that. Um, so, noting that these are the these are the types of activities that we would focus on, I'll hand over to Noni. He'll now run through an online poll so we can get an idea from you of what's in the Yes, Councillor. Um, look, I have uh, read as much as I possibly can, and, and look, it's all great, um, depending on what the decorations look like, of course, um, uh, which is always key. But what is Plan B? I mean, what, what does um, all this look like if there is a lockdown, or if social distancing is applied to Santa and everybody else? Uh, I can answer that in relation to the Christmas pageant. SATC are working very closely um, with, uh, with Health SA to work on deliverables as we are for years in relation to how to make these events possible for social distancing and uh, perhaps in a controlled environment in relation to audiences coming in. However, that's up to them in relation to the budget. But all of the deliverables that we would want to fund through this will still speak to social distancing. I think it's going to stay. Um, certainly, we'll be looking at uh, what, what activities are proposed and we won't be encouraging any, any enormous signature events that draw people to one destination. We'll be making sure that that's easy. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I guess I'm not, uh, I'm sort of half joking about sitting on Santa's knee with social distancing, but what are we going to do about um, uh, decorations? For example, one of the, the things about Rome Mall particularly is that the decorations actually encourage people to go along and touch them and so on. Is there a cleaning regimen or uh, a plan to fence them off or? Uh, through the presiding member, my understanding from Rundamore Management Authority is yes, they're currently working through their approach for Christmas um, and their COVID response plan, which does include cleaning and Christmas decorations, a part of that. 
Thank you. And sorry, Councillor Sandusel, that was procedural. No, that's all right. Shoot. No worries. Um, look, thank you. Just before I do the online poll, some general um, comments, I guess, about the uh, prioritisation or the general um, approach taken. I, I guess for me, I, I think it's very important that this has a community um, focused lens this year. I, I did notice looking through a lot of the work that there's a, a particular economic um, focus that's been applied and I understand that Christmas is an important time of year for our retailers. But I also think you know, there's 40,000 South Australians that have lost their jobs. I think this um, so far, and I think this Christmas is going to be a very you know, challenging one for a lot of people. Um, and so I think if um, and so I'd really like to see that the focus this year being flipped so that it's about recognising the most vulnerable people in our community and ensuring that everybody can enjoy the uh, spirit of Christmas in some way. I, mean, I actually think whatever um, one's religious denomination that has is the real meaning of Christmas is meant to be about looking after members of the community that are struggling and people that are less fortunate. So I'd really like that to be the focus. Um, and if there's a, a bonus for businesses, that's great. But you know we've had such a challenging year. I just think to apply the economic lens to this Christmas is the wrong lens to apply. So I guess that's my general and um, my general feedback. Thank you. I might just see if we let's get the poll underway yeah. and get to members of Jesus flying and then get some responses there after. Uh, through the presiding member, um, we do have three questions this evening. Um, Vicky and Felicity have handed out some information. Using your devices, if you could please just go to pollev.com backslash Adelaide City. Um, on your device, you'll be presented with four proposed outcomes. Oh, waiting. Uh, if council members uh, don't wish to participate, they can either answer the questions in a verbal sense or, or write it down on a piece of paper. Waiting. A message saying waiting for the presentation. Okay. Just skip it. Yes. Yeah. Is that right? Yes, Michael will let you in. It's active now. Oh, cool. Yep. Um, so you'll be presented with the four proposed outcomes for Christmas. Um, you can respond four times. And the first question is, which of the proposed outcomes do you feel will help achieve your vision for Christmas? And then what do we How many do we have? Yeah, four ways. Oh, four ways. Yeah. Yeah. Four times. Yeah. Four times. <laughs> <laughs> Where, where is the answer about relocating the Christmas pageant to Oklahoma? Always bring that to the council chamber's motion. For me, the, for me, these questions actually highlight the point I was making about the economic lens, and that's not a criticism, but they are very oriented towards. All right, members, one more, one more, one more minute. Is everyone? Uh, 60 seconds. Oh, my God. So you one of the Members, we've moved on to question two. Um, for question two, we'd really like to hear your ideas for Christmas. You can submit your ideas by writing them into your device and you'll also be able to see each other's ideas. So you, you can respond to others' ideas by giving a thumbs up or thumbs down. 
And the second question is, is there anything else you would like to see included in the outcomes for Christmas? No, no, it's just for this one. Yeah. 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 generating ideas all day for you. Um, uh, but of course, any further ideas can be emailed through to the administration. Yes. Okay. Next. Cool. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, for the final question, members, you'll, be, you'll see on your device the five proposed deliverables for Christmas. You can respond seven times. And the final question is, which of the proposed key deliverables are the most important to you? Right. Yeah. 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 That's Mary's yeah. 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 So, not quite sure how to do that. So, I'm not sure. I'm I'm not sure. 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 I'm Where's Christ? Oh, come on. Where's the Lord? Come on. That's right. And the major events. I'm not going to I was going to say the 12 disciples. <laughs> 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 
very well. Uh, and for 15 years, we'll just Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The, the last two things just to, to talk about oh, now. The, through, the, through the chair, the proposed next steps. Um, you, you'll see there the plan of what is already proposed within our Christmas uh, festival. However, of course, with the incentive scheme and the next few months, the, you'll see many more uh, activations across the city. Uh, this approach leaves room for growth of the festival, not only this year, but in, in the coming years to follow. Um, so with that, thanks, Moni, for running the poll and all of our helpers and for your participation. Um, we propose that the, next, the timeline is that we start in August next month. Um, the incentive scheme will open in August. And the Christmas festival start date, of course, is the 1st of November. And um, we will be consulting stakeholders and everyone through this process to come back to you with a plan of a festival, um, Christmas festival plan for April 2021. Um, and so with that, I say Merry Christmas. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Christy. Uh, we'll open up to feedback and questions. Lord Mayor has a quick one. Yeah, um, two quick questions. One is, uh, I noticed in the, um, in the activity map that you had carols by candlelight, but it wasn't in the timeline. And I'm just sort of checking that you're capturing what other people are doing, like Christmas proms at the Festival Theatre and all of those various things that are happening. That was a yes. Yes, through the presiding member. Yes, that's correct, Lord Mayor. Um, we'll be capturing from the 1st of November right through to the 31st of So we're going to sort of say this is everything that's happening in the city. And the other thing is, um, do you remember a few years ago, I did that thing on um, North Terrace with the Christmas pageant and the institutions down North Terrace? Um, are we sort of incorporating things, are the institutions part of this as well? So the art gallery, the museum, the library, etc. Uh, through the presiding member, yes, that is our planned approach that we would incorporate the institution or the cultural institutions along the um, along North Terrace. And what, last question, and um, obviously part of the difficulty has been that our lighting and decorations, because it's summer, you can't actually see them until 8.30, 9 o'clock at night, which means it's, it, it's um, even though there's a lot of the decorations through the city, you're actually not getting that impact. So has, um, just in terms of consideration to day, what what is the daytime sort of um, decorations, I guess? Um, through the presiding member, um, Lord Mayor, we have been investigating daytime lighting options um, so you can see them during the daylight hours um, and then for this year we were very much um, looking at increasing the lighting with the daylight option and then building on that for the following years once the members have had the opportunity to consider the action plan in early next year. Sorry and one final one because I did note that uh, some one of the councillors said they wanted Father Christmas flying through the city uh, and we did do that augmented reality a few years back, which actually, when you look through your phone or your iPad, you did actually see Father Christmas fly over the top of the town hall and land and all that sort of stuff. So whether anything in that area, given we've got a lot of um, creative industries and tech in the city. Through the presiding <coughs> member, the incentive scheme will be open for people to indeed apply to perhaps present a, a Christmas app or some sort of um, tech-based solutions, so that would be something that we could find through that scheme. Yeah. Thank you. I did make the projectile. Oh, yes, I did make the projectile. Councillor Cross, did you have it next? Oh, sorry. Oh, no, you did have it earlier before we held. Go down, Mary. Um, thank you, uh, Jen. Um, I know that we all uh, uh, have fun with this app and it's really great, but it's actually very, it's, it's one of the um, things that I get asked a lot about Christmas from traders and from um, the residents of the city. And uh, bringing it to the main streets is the, was the whole part of it and the concentration of making sure the consistency uh, of the decorations that we have in the mall or in the city is stretched out into the main streets. And um, I assume that we are working towards that and with the traders as well. Um, I also um, would like to see um, some um, 
things done with that in our squares, uh, Wellington Square, Whitmore Square. And I think that would be an answer to um, Councillor Sim's point that would bring out the residents, uh, the, well, the community um, in a different form um, than you know where the traders are. Um, so I think you know if we can look at lighting there, especially that they probably have carols at night there. I, you know, I like the idea of it being a festival event. That's fantastic. Um, I think you know that you know if you have daily things happening, um, that gives a connection back into the city. But I like to see the events to be um, more children-based as well. Um, I think that the excitement is there for the children, and I think that's what parents are looking for to do activities with the kids. Um, and I just another point. In, I know that the London Mall Authority do their own decorations, but I'd like to see the decorations to be brought back with focus onto the actual shop fronts of the businesses and not blocking um, shop fronts if that can be in mind in mind that you know and i also would like to see traditional colors christmas being red christmas being green um rather than going <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, traditional uh, decorations um that come with it i think that um that is just what people <coughs> think um <coughs> what else was there um consistency yeah, throughout the city um i said community events so yeah i think that's about yeah, really i think most of the people have been coming Splendid. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the map is looking a little uh, light on in the South Ward. I presume the Hutt Street goes all the way along Hutt Street, but could we also open any of the Main Street activities um, to that southwest corner? Really exciting, Edinburgh. Yes, absolutely. Hutt, that's tricky. Hutt Street is Hutt Street, not just where that top end map dot is. And uh, again, through the incentive scheme, there may be activations that we can help fund <coughs> that will come through the Southwest Residence Committee and all businesses and traders. Great, thanks. Councillor Rand. Is Wellington Square, it says squares, but that's a blue teal and the Wellington Snow. Is it? The license left there from last year. They're actual globes. Like light. So they're all you want. They're just up there now. No, I need Christy. Through the presiding member. At this point today, we have an activity scheduled in that square, but um, hearing your feedback tonight. Is I don't want that. I don't want an activity. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, understood. The Excellent. Okay, Councillor Noel. Um, just a couple of points as sort of regards around, say, Father Christmas, and I think, uh, um, and I had a conversation this week about, you know, his actual home should be around on the wall, as that as that ability to put him as the focus, that's always been where he has been. And uh, it is also about engaging all the traders in that down that street uh, to make that the centre, um, you know, because that is where you, know, you will get most value from him and, and then the environment. Um, and certainly the um, interactivity within the, within the main precinct. So if you're looking at say the central market precinct, that you're you're discovering things through all the different precinct groups that are through those sort of areas. So that there is a, a way to discover, you know, it can be run with walking, whatever, whoever joins in, and you're you're presenting things there that fit into the obviously into the theme, but maybe nuance to the various. Uh, I mean, you've got different cultural uh, you know, groups that work through these different areas, so you can they can discover how each of those are, for example, in that precinct, um, through the eyes of the different nationalities, and, things. Um, and then you've got the other, you know. In, in the other community groups that can do their own sort of thing as well and, and it could be just some sort of little magical thing where you can take children to um, where they could just you know uh, might it is a bit late but where they can you know be part of something that's special. The carousel was always nice for Christmas. Thank you. Members, any other suggestions, feedback, questions, Council Sims? Thank you. And I'm just keen to understand what the criteria is around the um, incentive schemes 
uh, for businesses and how do you have any thoughts on uh, how those grants are going to be offered and what community benefit will need to be demonstrated? Through the presiding member, we're actually just on that at the moment. The guidelines are being written, but the intention is, of course, that we will be making sure there's visibility, that it's cost effective, and it's timely, and that, um, that there is a good spread across the city, and that we're getting a, a, a real sense from community groups. There is a, a real hope that community groups will, will be approaching many groups to be able to present, and, and musicians and artists particularly as well. Um, alongside businesses and, and uh, we will be using the next few months to be pulling our leaders to try and encourage many people to apply to I guess um, by way of feedback then as you craft those um, uh, terms um, in terms of people and in terms of people making an application I think um, it's really important if we're going to be giving um, council money to private enterprise that there is a, a really clear public benefit particularly at the moment and for me that means that you know it, it's not just conferred on people that actually go into the shop uh, to buy something but that it is you know contributing in some way to the public realm recognizing that a lot of families are going to have a lot less money this Christmas and I see the city as being something that belongs to everybody. So if we're going to be using public money in this way, I just think that's a very important part of any criteria. And um, in terms of, you know, green and red, you can call me Santa Claus. It's appropriately dressed tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Members, any other feedback? Um, I just have I just have one suggestion. Um, uh, if Santa is coming to town as he did last year, could we ring the bells? Yeah. Be, I'm not sure what state they're in, but um, like right now. A, a ringable a ringable state, hopefully. I think that would be a nice touch. It's a nice idea. Okay. All right. Splendid. Uh, thank you, Christy. Thank you, Noni. Members, that brings us uh, to the confidential items of the agenda. Um, exclusion of the public, I'll seek a mover and a seconder for 6-1, the ADA O'Connell project update. Moved by Arman, seconded by Jesse. Arman, you wish to speak? Okay. Jesse, members discussion. Councilor Martin. Uh, can we please just start having these conversations in public? I think so is the answer to that rhetorical question. Uh, members, any other? Nothing further. I'm on to sum up. Sum up. Put that to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, thank you. I'll ask any uh, participants. Oh, okay, and a mover for 6 2 as well which is the uh, CEO update. I understand this may not have been on the most recent agenda that you uh, looked at. Moved by Armand, just seconded by Jesse. Members, uh, Councillor Martin. How do we know what we're voting on to stay in confidence if we don't know what's on the agenda and we don't know what the subject is? What, what, what do you want to do? It's an urgent CEO update. Can we see what the motion is? I don't know what it is. <laughs> Not so uh, there, there is no motion. It'll be a verbal update from the CEO. Oh, okay. And the CEO is asking that to be in conference. Yes. yes. For those kind of if, it, if it just said, you know, intensely personal matter, you know, um, or... It's the CEO update on the place. Major new development or... Is that up there? We can't vote on something that's not traditional. A place portfolio is 6 2. Oh, I know. Sorry, that's that's cool. Cool. Yes, I'm happy. I'm happy about that. I don't know. Understood. All right. I take that as the discussion. Members, any other speakers on this? Jesse. I'm on to sum up. I'm oh, sorry. But uh, well, sorry, I'm not going to vote for this because I don't actually know what it is and I don't know what the. Um, uh, on back on which basis uh, the claim is being made for it to be in confidence mm -hmm. and I think that if um, we to see these matters they should be um, 
made known to us before uh, we sit down at the physical meeting because this is not on my agenda. So I won't be supporting think, it on that basis. Yeah, if I could just refer members to grounds and basis, um, information considered in competence to ensure it does not breach any law, duty of competence or other legal obligation, particularly I draw your attention to disclosure would involve the unreasonable disclosure of public information concerning the personal affairs of a person. Uh, and so forth. And with that, I'll just ask, is there any other contributions, Councillor Martin? Um, yes, Chair. Look, I I do know what that's about now because um, that has been the subject heading on memos or emails that have come around. However, I do take Councillor Sims's point. It would be really good to have had an email saying, we will give you a confidential update on what is uh, there. Uh, canvassing this area or that, and then we could reasonably vote to have it in confidence. I don't think uh, I know what it is. I think if Councillor Sims had a briefing, he'd feel much more comfortable. It's not difficult to do, just an email would help us enormously to support it. I will vote for it, but I understand entirely what he's talking about. I'm sure the staff will take that feedback on board. Any other contributions? No, we'll go to Armand to sum it up. Okay, put that to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. And now I will ask the stream to be stopped.